so for 30 years I've worked with gang members and uh, uh, so the folks that uh, focus on prevention thought that made me eminently suited to address you this morning. <laughs> so you can take that up with them. <laughs> and it's the privilege of my life to know those folks, you know. Uh, the day won't ever come when I have more courage or I am more noble or I am closer to God than the thousands of men and women I've been privileged to know over these 30 years. Uh, so for all uh, these 30 years, I've learned so much uh, from gang members and, and I'm so indebted to them. But in the last couple of years, they've taught me how to text. And so I'm, <laughs> and, uh, because I'm on the road a lot, I kind of live by it and I'm always, uh, and I'm pretty good at it, you know, uh, LOL and OMG and BTW and the homies have taught me a new one, OHN, which apparently stands for, oh hell no. <laughs> Well, you know, it's always about trying to invite uh, communities to invest in uh, each other and to try to create and foster a community of kinship such that God might recognize it so you can have a, a sure and, and certain and utterly reliable sense that we belong to each other. Because the truth is, no matter what you're trying to address, homelessness or gang violence, if you don't believe there's an undergirding uh, truth that we belong to each other, you'll never truthfully, you'll never achieve what you hope to. Um, and so if you work for kinship, all those other things become a byproduct, peace and justice and equality and, and nobody gets thrown away. So that's the core, I think. It would seem that the measure of our health as a community may well reside in our ability to stand in awe at what the poor have to carry rather than stand in judgment at how they carry it.